Welcome back to Learn RCC Design Series. In this video series, we are learning the complete procedure of RCC structural design using a live project two-storied building plan as shown here. In the last video of this series, we have discussed about the various steps involved in RCC structural design of building. The link of the video is given in the description. In this video, we will learn how to decide the location, size and orientation of columns. So watch this video till the end, subscribe this channel and press the bell icon so that you can get all the notifications of new videos of this course. So let us start with the locations of the columns. Generally, columns can be preferably located near the corners of the building for better structural stability. So, we can start the column placement from the corners of this building plan. Hence, place the columns 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 at the highlighted corners of the building. It is always better to plan a column layout on a grid line to avoid the mistakes and place the columns in the right way. It is useful to get the proper alignment of the beams placed over the columns and also to get balanced load transfer. So let us draw vertical grid line 1 1 through column number 3 and 4, grid line 2 2 through column number 1 and grid line 3 3 through column number 2 and 5. Similarly, draw horizontal grid lines AA through column number 1 and 2, grid line BB through column number 3 and grid line CC through column number 4 and 5. Next, if possible, try to provide the columns at four corners of the staircase block as we required those for staircase tower. Here, Column number 1 and 2 are already at the corners of the staircase block. So we can add column number 6 and 7 at remaining corners. Now draw the horizontal grid line DD for these columns. The distance between columns is also plays an important role. Preferably, we should try to avoid larger center to center distance between columns as it increases beam span which results in higher bending moment. This also increases the size and reinforcement of beam and column. Therefore, in general, for residential building, we can keep the center to center distance between column equal to 3 meter to 6 meter. For public building and in special cases, it can be more or less than this. Here, the center to center distance between column 3 and 4 is around 8.68 meter. Hence, we can provide one more column in between these two. The columns can be placed at the intersection of the walls if required. Hence, we can add column number 8 at the corner of living and dining room on the grid line 1 1. Now, draw horizontal grid line EE for this column. Similarly, add the column number 9 between column 5 and 6 at the intersection of grid line EE and grid line 33 which is also the intersection of wall. Here, center to center distance between column 4 and 5 is also around 8.41 meter. Therefore, we can provide one more column in between these two. So let us add column number 10 at the intersection of grid line CC and grid line 22, which is the corner of kitchen room. Similarly, add the column number 11 between column 8 and 9 at the intersection of grid line EE and grid line 22, which is the corner of master bedroom. The location of column is also depends on the placement of beams. As this is ground floor plan, there will be plinth or ground beam below every wall. So let us draw 
the beams for all the walls. Here the beam shown with red color hatching are the primary beams which are supporting a very large span heavily loaded secondary beam from point A to B. This will significantly increase the moment of the primary beams which in turn increases the size and reinforcement of the beam and supporting columns. Hence, it is better to add the column number 12 and 13 at the junction of these beams along grid line 11 and 33. Draw the horizontal grid line FF for column 12 and 13. As the spacing between column 12 and 13 is around 8.41 meter, we can provide a column between these two. So, put the column number 14 on the intersection of grid line FF and 22, which is also the junction of two beams. Here, the maximum spacing between column number 3 and 8 is around 5 meter. Now, at this stage, the column placement with respect to ground floor plan can be acceptable. For multi-story building, we need to check the feasibility of ground floor column positions for all other floors also. As the building is two-storied, we have to check the feasibility of ground floor column position for the first floor. Hence, place the columns at the same position in first floor plan and check whether any column position is inside the room in window or door or passages etc. If yes, then we can change the position of that column. Here in first floor, we can see that column number 3 is looking in odd location. So let us try to shift this column at suitable location. If we move the column number 3 to the intersection of grid line 11 and DD, the column will be in the corner of living cum dining room at first floor and in the wall adjacent to window at the ground floor. This position seems to be acceptable. So let us move the column number 3 to this new position. Now at ground floor we required the plain beams to support the wall of living cum dining room and the terrace slab beam at first floor. So if we add the column at the intersection of grid line 11 and AA, it can support terrace slab beam at first floor and plinth beam at ground floor. So add the column number 15 at this intersection. Now once again check the feasibility of the column positions by drawing the beams under wall at ground floor and first floor. After finalizing the column positions, renumber the columns from left to right and bottom to top. Now let us discuss about the size of column. The column size of a building will depend on a number of factors such as total load transfer to that column, the material used for its construction and the specific design requirements of the building. The size of a column increases because of two factors. First, increase in the spacing of a two columns, which increases the dimensions of the columns as well as the depth of the beam. And second, height of the building. This increase in the number of floors is directly proportional to the dimensions of the column. Usually, Final size of the column will be obtained through iteration process. Therefore, initially for analysis, preliminary sizes are assigned to the columns. After analysis, columns will be designed to get the final size. In general, following guidelines can be used to choose the preliminary or final size of the column for gravity load 
without any special requirement. First, in rectangular or square columns, one side will be usually equal to width of the wall, which is commonly 230 mm or 300 mm. Second, other side will be usually provided based on formwork size availability, which is generally 230 mm, 300 mm, 350 mm, 400 mm and so on. Here we can observe that the increment of 50 mm or 2 inches in the size. At some reasons or a locality it may be of a 3 inches or other. The increment in side dimensions is depend on the formwork size availability in that region or locality. If the size are different then contractor may need to prepare new formwork for the casting. Now let us move to our building plan. Based on the previous discussion let us decide the preliminary size of the column. Generally for a single story residential building with a maximum column spacing of 4 meter and M20 grade of concrete the size of column can be considered as 230 mm by 230 mm that is 9 inch by 9 inch. Here the selected residential building is ground plus one story. Hence, assume the preliminary size of the column as 230 mm by 300 mm that is 9 inch by 12 inch. After analysis, we can increase or decrease the size of the columns if required based on analysis results and design. Now, let us discuss about the orientation of the columns. Orientation of columns in any buildings plays an important role in load carrying capacity of building and proper distribution of moment along the span. Following points should be kept in mind for the orientation of column. First, the depth of column should be preferably perpendicular to the major axis of the bending. Second, in case two perpendicular beams are placed on the columns, then if possible, the depth of the column should be along the larger span of the beam. Third, try to flush the column with walls. The aesthetic factor should also be taken into consideration while orienting the column. Based on this discussion, let us orient the columns in this building plan. Finally, if we want to answer the question that how should I know how many columns are provided in a building? Which size of a column should I provide? Or how to orient the columns? Experience is the only tool which can answer this question. Because the number of columns and their sizes are always arbitrary. The guidelines available on the number of columns, their sizes and orientation in online or offline content is based on the experience of individuals. So whatever the number of columns, their sizes and orientation, it has to satisfy two requirements. First, architectural requirement and second, structural requirement as shown in this flowchart. One has to iterate many number of times to reach at the right number, position, size and orientation. An experienced engineer will iterate less number of iterations compared to the beginner. In next video, we will start the second step of structural design that is structural analysis. There we will learn how to calculate the loads on the building. If you like this video, give your comments. Don't forget to subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications of the new videos.